emailed. Uh, in the interest of time, questions and comments can be directed to the presenters after the presentation has ended uh, using the contact information available on the final slide. Uh, and uh, since we have a, a large group today, all lines will be muted. This is the first of the three webinars we will be hosting related to your price list. Uh, today's will focus on the most common CDM errors we have found when dealing with CDMs. In addition to, today, to, to today's, we will be hosting uh, one called the Impact of Pricing Levels and Strategies on Net Revenue. This will review topics such as charging for supplies, handing off Medicare copays, budget coding and documentation. And finally, our last webinar will be how to allocate decision rights, monitor performance and set incentives. Uh, this will focus on how to develop systems for accountability and transparency with an emphasis on establishing pricing accountability and charge master integrity throughout your hospital. So please be sure to mark your calendar for those. And with that, I'll now turn it over to Jonathan Pattenberg. John? Thanks, Keith. So as Keith had mentioned, today's webinar is really going to focus on the most common CDM errors. Um, when we look at CDMs, this is not to say that these ones that we're going to look at are all of the CDM errors. If we were to do that, it would be a three-year seminar and it would be thousands and thousands of different errors. What we really want to look at today is the six most common errors that end up leading to either lost revenue, um, data integrity issues, or just broad concerns with the CDM as a whole. When we end up approaching this, the overall goal is to have a pricing strategy as defensible and then also reliant from a data integrity perspective. When we jump ahead, we categorize these into six main different areas. And what I'm going to do is walk through right now the why each one of these areas is important. And then after that, Dan will go into different information to discuss how we derive the information and what really makes up that information that we're presenting. So again, these are the six most common areas and each one has a different component for what we're looking at. The first area we're looking at is the below Medicare fee schedule. What this area really looks at, and we see this across pricing strategies as a whole, is when we establish a pricing based on a certain CPT code, we want to ensure that the pricing is at least set at what the Medicare fee schedule is. And that's whether it's on the APC side or the physician fee schedule side. What we don't want to do is have a pricing methodology where if we have an emergency room E&M visit, and the price list from Medicare states that that should be, say, $200. We don't want to set that price at $100 because what we're doing is we're charging less than a standardized price that's across the industry. So again, when we're looking at this, we want to ensure that that pricing is at least at a minimum the Medicare fee schedule. So that's that first card A, which is highlighted on the presentation. The next one looks at your Medicare fee schedule factor. And what this looks at is it looks at the variation within a particular department. And what we want to do is when we mark up a fee schedule, we want to make sure that the markups are consistent across a particular grouping of codes. So let's take the emergency room. When we're looking at our five E&M codes within the emergency room, we want to make sure that they have a consistent markup factor across those E&M codes. We don't want to mark up a level five at six times, but then mark up a level three at two times. What this ends up doing is it creates an inconsistent pricing strategy within a department, whereas the markup for certain codes end up do not tying together. So as we go up the scale in from a severity perspective or from an acuity perspective, we want to make sure that that pricing strategy is consistent so that as you get to a higher level, the cost ends up increasing proportionally and goes across that level. So again, these two are ones that we see, I would say across uh, most common with most hospitals, where it either has a pricing methodology below the fee schedule or the markup factor is incorrect from that perspective. The next one looks at the same CPT Hicks Picks code or a different price. And what this one looks at, and the reason why this one is important is, when we end up creating pricing within a system, we want to ensure that we have the same pricing set for a certain CPT code. Often what happens is because most electronic health record systems are driven by procedure codes and not CPT codes, 
we will often see the creation of multiple procedure codes within a particular system, and all of those codes have different pricing. What ends up happening is, is that as we're coding claims or we're ended up generating charges, we often will end up selecting charges at either a higher level or a lower level based on whatever code was selected in that particular instance. So what this looks at is it looks at a situation where you have multiple CPT codes, but again, different price lists. And this can look at whether it's based on a rev code grouping or a certain department. But what we will do is that the reason why it is important is to look again where you have that varied pricing. And again, you want price consistency across your price list. That's why that one is important. The next one is your missing CPT and HixPix codes. And what this one looks at is, the reason why this is important is, if there's not a CPT code or HixPix code that ends up dropping on the claim, there's not a way to end up billing for that service. So what will happen is, is you will have a certain charge that will drop in your electronic health record system, but that charge will not correlate to being able to pull over to a claim and then send that claim off to a payer. So you can end up having charges in your system that will not correlate to any revenue down the road going forward. The next one again is looking at your invalid CPT HixPix codes. And what we did is, the reason why this is important is you want to have again a code, just like having a code that's non-existent, having an invalid code can also lead to the same issue. If a code is invalid, we cannot receive reimbursement when we submit a code that doesn't work. So a lot of times this will lead to claims being rejected or coming back to us. It could also lead to improper revenue recognition. It can also lead to just a, revenue not generating payments going down the road. So again, this is also another one that's extremely important. The last one, which is missing descriptions, I would say that this is one that we see across multiple hospitals in CDM. So what ends up happening is, is there's not many people that understand the codes or they have memorized all of the CPT codes across the different data sets. When we end up having missing descriptions, what ends up happening is a lot of times is, whoever has access to the system will end up logging in. And because they're searching for a particular code, when they end up logging in and do not see that description within the system, they will often generate another record for that CPT code. So again, the lack of a description can often lead to the duplication or data integrity concerns by having an abundance of records in there that shouldn't be there or also having records that are maybe outdated or no longer valid. So really, again, and, and before I kick it off to Dan, what I want to mention is, is the, the reason for all of these errors and what we want to get to with the price list and also the CDM as a whole is we want to get away from having a single person control the charge master. So in the old days, you would have a single person that would be responsible for the entire pricing methodology of the system, and only that person would have access to get into the price list as a whole. What we want to move more towards is the ability to increase accountability and access to the system, but also transfer that accountability to your department managers. So by breaking it up into these six different areas, it allows for a more broad deployment to different department managers, whereas they can start to look at the individual pricings for their department, but also ensure that there's that pricing methodology across the board. And again, it always goes back to those foundational elements of having a price list that's both defensible, but also holds minor data integrity from a perspective of meeting a compliance perspective. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn it over to Dan and as I explain the why, really the, the why each one of those components is important, Dan is going to focus more on the how we calculate that information. And that's just as important as the why, because ultimately when we're calculating the why, we need to know whether or not the information is accurate and correct. And that the how is really how we're going to get that information. So I'm going to turn it over to Dan, and here he is now. All right. Thank you, Jonathan. So this is just a visualization of the process that we use to determine the errors. So how it works is we would receive, we received revenue files, um, which had revenue detail. We received the charge master. We would evaluate those files and then we would load them into our database. In that database and from the logic that we built, we would look for these different errors using information from the American Medical Association and their CPT codes 
the Medicare fee schedule, and APC payment rates. So I'll actually demonstrate the tool. <clears throat> So when we log in, we land on the pricing dashboard. And up here at the top, we have some several different tabs. We have a price check tab, which we'll, we will actually explore in a later webinar. We have a report tab, which produces a report that can be used to give to department managers or board, um, board members. And we also have an export function, which actually exports all the data that we see displayed here in the pricing dashboard to a to an Excel file. Here below, we have the cards that Jonathan spoke about or the different errors in displayed in cards that Jonathan spoke about. And then here, we have a filtration to filter the different co codes by department and by revenue code. So for purposes of this webinar, we're going to focus on just the emergency department and we're going to take a look at revenue codes 0450. So as you can see, the cards and the different errors updated that are specific to that department. So we'll jump down and take a look at below Medicare fee schedule. The way we determined that these were errors is we took individual CPT and HCPCS codes that were loaded from the hospital's charge master and compared them against the Medicare fee schedule or the APC payment databases. In any situation where the charge of the hospital was that of or was below the Medicare fee schedule or APC payment rate, we noted it and it's displayed here. So let's go ahead and click on this card and we can see when we click on that card, the data grid updates here below. Now the data grid displays all the errors out and can be given to department managers or supervisors or people in the revenue cycle department who are responsible for the CDM. And it can be exported into a CSV file, Excel, PDF, or printed. And you can search for specific codes. Now the columns, here for HCPCS codes actually comes from the C hospital CDM. The revenue code, of course, comes from the hospital as well, along with the description. The type determines whether it's a technical or a professional fee charge, and the charge is the hospital's charge. This column actually comes from separate databases that determine the Medicare reimbursement pulling from either the Medicare fee schedule or the APC payment rate and compares the hospital charge to that Medicare reimbursement and also displays the variance. The professional fee column would simply show the Medicare reimbursement for a professional fee if it was displayed here. The next card, Medicare fee schedule factor, as Jonathan mentioned, really helps us display the distribution of prices throughout a department. So let's select a factor of 1x markup from Medicare reimbursement. And it displays the codes that have been, that fall between that 1x and 2x markup of the Medicare fee schedule. But just to show the variation in this particular CDM, there are some that are marked up more than seven times Medicare reimbursement. We can see here that a, that a charge of $365 while the reimbursement is only $43 from Medicare. So the question can be asked, what is your pricing strategy? Do you want to have a wide distribution of codes or of prices within a department? And I think that we would feel that uniformity is probably best within a department. The next card here, same CPT, HCPCS code, but different price display. What we did is we took any CPT code and paired it with the revenue code and determined if the price was different between those two. So we could check for price uniformity. If we jump down here and take a look at a one particular HCPCS code, we can see that 
despite having the same revenue code, this HICPIC code has two different prices and has a price variance, while another department with a completely different revenue code has the same price of that of another revenue code. Moving on to missing CPT or HICPIC codes, all what this feature does is it takes a look at the CDM and determines any place where there's revenue codes where there should be a CPT or HICPIC codes and displays that out in the data grid. Invalid CPT or HICPIC codes, this compares the hospital's CDM to databases of the American Medical Association and or the CMS data file to make sure that all codes in the CDM are currently valid. And this code in particular, as we can see, is only four digits and would need to be updated or removed as it is an invalid code. Finally, missing descriptions. This feature uses logic to take a look and make sure that the CDM has descriptions for all codes to ensure CDM integrity. So moving on to the report feature, we can go up here, click report, A report is produced and we can actually select what departments we want to display in the report. So we can deselect a department or select a department. We can view the report. And for purposes of this webinar, we stuck to our picking on the emergency room and it displays how many codes are actually currently under the emergency room department. So there's 262. It displays the percentages of errors that are the percent of errors that are below the Medicare fee schedule, and also the percent of errors that have the same code, different price, missing CPT or HICPIC code, invalid CPT HICPIC codes, missing descriptions. Essentially a summary of the pricing dashboard. And down below, we display the top 10 CPT codes by, char by total charge, and this is driven by the revenue detail file that is provided. So it's probably not surprising that in the emergency room, the top code happens to be 99283, which is moderate severity. And it displays the factor. And we can actually see here that the top, code, the top 10 codes that are used in the ED seem to generally fall between two and three times markup of Medicare fee schedule. However, some fall out of this range such as lower or moderate severity actually falls a little bit below the Medicare fee reimbursement. And we have a few that are actually more than three times the markup of Medicare fee reimbursement. And this report can be simply saved and sent via email or printed off and given to different department heads. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Keith. Thank you, Dan. Uh, and I'd actually like to turn it back over to John, who is going to talk a little bit more about the upcoming webinars that we have. Yeah, so first what I want to talk about is, is really not going into the webinars first, but what I really want to highlight is many of you are probably asking, you know, what, what is the relevance to this and why is it important? And really what we're looking at is I don't think there's anybody out there that can say that reimbursements are increasing at a substantive rate beyond cost. And where the charge master in the past used to be a distant thought, where we were able to make it up on reimbursement gains, because the industry as a whole is starting to reduce where reimbursements are not increasing at the same level of cost, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we have the tools in place so that we can address all of those things going forward. We do not want to have lost opportunities. So when we focused on those six cards, whether it's the below Medicare fee schedule, the missing HICSPICS codes, the duplicate codes, this is, again, it's, it's not to say that this is every error within the CDM. That by all means, there, there are many more errors out there, um, and this does not replace a, a substantive or comprehensive review of a pricing strategy. What it's really there for is to say, okay, these are the errors we have within a CDM. And on a day-to-day -day basis, if we were to focus on these six errors, whether it's below the fee schedule, whether it's missing HICSPIX codes, missing descriptions, duplicate codes, if we're able to address these six errors, 
we would be able to address 80% of the problems that are happening within our CDM. To take that a step further, really the goal is, is that as we continue to move more towards increasing accountability through an organization, our goal is really to look at how can we pass some of that accountability onto our department heads? And how can we look at the CDM as something that should be more organizationally driven than something that is just focused on by the HIM department or by a CFO or somebody of that level? And what we're really looking to do is, is get it so that the CFO or your upper executives are more driving a strategy, but it allows our department managers and day-to-day -day leaders to get more involved in the control and the direction of the CDM. If we were to look at a healthcare system or a hospital that had a, a fully implemented and effective pricing strategy and then also accountability with regard to that, then the department managers would play an active role in the creation and the maintenance of their CDMs. And unfortunately, that's just not what we see broadly across the industry. So what we're looking to do is, is to create that environment where each department manager has access to the tools and the appropriate information so that they can start having a say in their pricing strategy. And this all rolls into the larger picture of looking at how the CDM drives revenue, both at the individual department level, but also across the organization as a whole. And what we really wanna do is start driving that further perspective and decision-making rights so that department managers going forward are focused less on just the expense side of their operation and more on revenue generation and those different factors. And when we look at a hospital, whether we're looking at a department or a grouping of departments, our department managers and leaders are those that are best inclined or best capable to understand, one, the services that we provide, but then also how those flow into the revenue generation. Because others that are more distantly involved are not responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of that department, it's hard for them to understand all of those codes that go into establishing a certain pricing strategy within a department. So that was really the foundation of what we were hoping to show again today. So again, I'll highlight those six cards that we often see as the most common errors. And again, as I had talked about a little bit around the why they were important and Dan went into the how they calculate. Again, the, the most common errors is the below Medicare fee schedule the Medicare fee schedule factor, and again, this is creating the consistent pricing strategy within a department. The same HICS-PICS CPT code, but different price. This is, again, where we have a similar price, or different price, but similar CPT code, and most times that is driven by having different procedure codes. The missing CPT code, an invalid CPT code, and again, missing descriptions. So last, what we're gonna focus on really quick is just to talk for a minute, and I, I guess we'll let everybody go a few minutes early today, which is always good in healthcare. Um, the last, what we're gonna focus on is the next two webinars. I know that this webinar was more at a high level, really around the why and the how. The next two webinars will really get into some more of the strategies around what we need to do. So again, the next webinar will focus on the impact of pricing levels and the strategies on net revenue. So what we'll do is talk about a little bit about how those different pricing strategies can flow into revenue generation for an organization. So we'll have some examples about maybe if we're underpricing certain things, what that can that do to a net patient revenue perspective? If we end up setting a supply threshold too high for the charging of supplies, does that lead to lost revenue by not charging supplies? and looking at all those different factors to say, what really does this do to the overall financial performance of an organization? The last we're gonna focus on is really in webinar C, and that is how to create an environment where you increase accountability across the organization. And I would say that our really successful organizations are the ones that have found a way to push that level of accountability down to our department managers. So our department managers are one, controlling their price list, but then also controlling revenue as a whole. I'm not saying that we should give all of our department managers access to the CDM where they can just log in at any time and make changes. But what I'm saying is, is that we put the information to them and hold them accountable so that they're the ones ultimately determining and driving pricing for their departments.
And then also we'll focus on different incentives and performance measures that we want to end up putting in place to ensure we do have that consistent pricing methodology, that we do have that defensible pricing methodology, and to ensure that we remain competitive within our market. So what I'm going to now do is pass it back to Keith, who can wrap us up, share a little bit more information. I hope everybody has a great weekend. Thank you very much for your time, and here is Keith. All right, thank you, John, and thank you, Dan, and uh, thank you all online for joining us. Um, please remember to mark your calendars for those next two webinars. Uh, once again, this presentation will be emailed to you shortly after we close here, and uh, you can direct any questions or comments you may have to the contact info that can be found at the last page. We appreciate you sharing your time, and have a good afternoon. Thank you.